Hi, and welcome to the Earth Science video course. In this lesson, we are on location at Norview High School in Norfolk, Virginia, and we're going to discuss laboratory safety. We're going to look at safety in the laboratory, protection in the laboratory, and what to do in the case of an accident. Let's start by looking at some general rules and guidelines to lab safety. And remember, if you're in an experiment and you're unsure about anything, ask. And these rules and guidelines are here for your protection. Here are some general rules for lab safety. At all times during an experiment, absolutely no horseplay. No food or drink in the lab, including chewing gum. Keep all papers and other objects away from open flames and chemicals in the lab setting. If it is not part of the experiment, it should be stored elsewhere in a safe place. Keep a clean and orderly lab area. Report immediately to your instructor any damaged safety or laboratory equipment. Before starting a laboratory exercise, know where laboratory equipment and protection is stored, including goggles, aprons, and gloves. Note the location of windows and exits and know how to exit the building in the event of an emergency. Identify the location of safety equipment, including the following. A first aid kit, fire extinguisher, fire blanket, emergency gas stop, eye wash station, safety shower, and chemical fume hood. Before starting a laboratory experiment, read laboratory procedures before you do any experiment, no matter how familiar you are with the procedures. Inspect your safety goggles and lab apron or coat for damage before putting them on. Wash your hands and put on properly fitting lab gloves. Inspect all lab equipment for damage. If using glassware, make sure it is not cracked or chipped. During the experiment, be purposeful in your actions. No running, skipping, or fast-paced movement. Always check your gloves during the experiment and replace them immediately if you notice any tears or other damage. When using heat, pick up all glassware with tongs or with heat-resistant gloves. Unless you're removing or returning glassware from storage, never assume that you know the temperature of any container. Glass looks the same whether it is hot or cold. Never point a heated or open container towards yourself or another person. Keep any volatile chemicals under a chemical hood. The hood sucks up any fumes and removes them from the lab area. Never directly smell any chemical or materials in the laboratory classroom unless instructed to do so using proper techniques. Chemical vapors can cause sickness and even death. Never put any glassware directly into a flame unless instructed to do so. Some glassware cannot tolerate high heat and will shatter. Once you have concluded the experiment, thoroughly clean and inspect all lab equipment for damage before returning it to storage. Inspect your goggles and apron for damage before returning them to storage. Dispose of your gloves and thoroughly wash your hands. Leave the lab area clean and ready for its next use. Well, now that we've discussed some of the general guidelines to lab safety, let's look at some of the protective equipment you'll need to wear to stay safe. Remember, no matter how unfashionable the safety protection equipment makes you feel, these objects can save your life. Safety goggles. By always wearing safety goggles, you block chemicals from splashing into your eyes, as well as shield them from debris. Your goggles must entirely cover the area around your eyes. Lab apron. A lab apron protects your vital organs and most of the front of you. Most laboratory aprons today are flame retardant and have a special protective coating on them that is resistant to acid, 
bases, and other corrosive materials. Lab gloves. In addition to keeping your hands clean, gloves protect your hands against chemical and biological hazards during experiments and dissections. There are many different kinds of gloves depending on the potential hazards of the experiment. Make sure to wear gloves that are appropriate to the experiment and that they fit properly. Hair. It is important to keep long hair tied back so it does not block your vision, come into contact with chemicals, or catch fire on a laboratory burner. You certainly do not want to brush your hair back and then realize you did so with a gloved hand covered with corrosive chemicals. Shoes. Wear closed-toed shoes to protect your feet if you do spill or drop anything. Choose shoes that are made of thick leather or another heavy material. Clothing. Avoid wearing loose-fitting or baggy clothing, dresses, or skirts that can easily catch fire or come into contact with chemicals. Jeans or pants and long sleeve shirts offer reasonable protection. Unfortunately, accidents will happen during laboratory experiments. Let's take a look at what to do when accidents occur. In the event of an accident, stay calm and notify your instructor or another adult immediately. Handling glassware. Handling glassware, sharp objects, and other laboratory equipment properly can help you avoid an accident in the lab. Glassware, sharp objects, and other laboratory equipment should be handled with care. In the event that glass breaks, use caution when cleaning it up and dispose of it in a bin dedicated to broken glass. Shattered glass can become very sharp. If you are ever cut by an object in the lab, notify your instructor and use the first aid kit to dress your wound. Handling sources of flame or heat. When working with any source of heat, you will want to exercise caution to avoid an accident. First, make sure your hair is tied back and you are not wearing loose clothing that could make contact with the heat source. If an accident was to occur when using a heat source, your reaction will depend on the type of accident. For a minor burn, notify your instructor immediately and use the first aid kit to dress your wound. Anything more than a minor burn will require immediate medical assistance. If your clothes catch on fire, immediately stop, drop, and roll. If there is not enough space to stop, drop, and roll, get the fire blanket and wrap the blanket tightly around yourself. This blanket is manufactured to smother the flames. Handling hazardous chemicals including toxins, carcinogens, flammable, and explosive materials. A flammable chemical will burn. Chemicals that are flammable are labeled. The vapors of flammable chemicals are ignited when mixed with air with suitable proportions. Only work with flammable chemicals in the designated chemical fume hood. If you are unsure about working with any chemicals that are labeled flammable, then it is best to seek the advice of your instructor before continuing with the experiment. Toxic chemicals can produce chronic and acute effects. Commonly known chronic effects include cancer and reproductive malfunction. Acute effects occur promptly upon exposure. The best way to avoid exposure to toxic chemicals is to simply minimize any exposure. Some toxic chemicals can only be used under a fume hood. Other toxic chemicals will require that you wear gloves to avoid exposure. When dealing with toxic chemicals, it is best to know what chemical you are working with and ask your instructor if you are unsure of the potential hazards. All toxic chemicals will be labeled. Neutralizing an acid spill. What do you do if you are working with a hazardous chemical or acid and it spills? First, make sure all of the students working around you are notified of the spill. Second, notify the instructor who will use the proper technique to clean the spill. In most cases, the instructor will use an acid or base neutralizer from a spill clean kit to clean the spill. It is important that you do not try to clean the spill without notifying the instructor. Attempting to clean a spill the incorrect way can lead to a serious injury. Eye wash. Even when you are wearing eye protection, it is possible that a chemical has made contact with your eyes. In this event, immediately go to the eye wash station and wash your eyes out with water. Also, notify the instructor immediately. Chemical shower. If the accident was large and you have covered your clothing or skin with the chemical, you will need to use the chemical shower. 
In this event, immediately go to the emergency shower and use it. Pull down on the lever and douse yourself with water. The water will dilute and flush away some of the chemical. Do not take any of your clothes off before you use the chemical safety shower. Pulling them over your head may cause you to get the chemical on your face or other parts of your body. Again, notify the instructor immediately. Trips, slips, and falls. The best way to avoid trips, slips, and falls in the science laboratory is to practice good housekeeping techniques. If you trip, slip, or fall and require first aid, notify your instructor immediately. Electrical cords. Before plugging in any electrical equipment, it is best if you inspect the equipment for damage. If any frayed electrical cords exist, do not use the equipment and notify the instructor immediately. Also, exercise caution when using electrical equipment around water. Radiation. Exposure to radiation in the laboratory has potential risks. When using a heat lamp, the lamp is producing infrared radiation. Exposure to this kind of radiation can cause minor burns. Notify your instructor if you feel you have been exposed to infrared radiation so first aid can be applied. When working with any type of radiation or laser, always make sure you are doing so properly to protect your skin and eyes. If you are unsure about working with radiation, ask your instructor before continuing. Well, great job today. In this lesson, we discussed laboratory safety. Remember, safety is your number one priority. I'll see you next time.